Good to see everyone. Uh, always good to be here on a Monday after a win. Took us a little, little bit to get things rolling, uh, but uh, eventually uh, players kind of settled down. I think coaching staff settled down a little bit. Uh, made some same really good adjustments during the course of the game, which allowed us to get some stops, some critical stops. The big sack by Tony Pierce right before the half, uh, which put him out of field goal range. That would have been a, a monstrous field goal. Um, the uh, interception early in the second half, the two for, uh, punts that we forced him. Uh, we talked early in the week and all week long. We just had to create some stops. This was a team that had not been stopped very often during the course of the year, uh, scoring a ton of points putting up a ton of yards, and really uh, uh, give a lot of credit to our coaches and to our, and to our players for just hanging in there and, 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 and finding a way. Uh, offensively, um, just sticking with our plan. We, we, we knew we needed to run the football. We needed to win the, the time of possession battle, which we were able to. Uh, had the ball over 35 minutes. We're 8 to 10 on third downs. Uh, those two things right there. Uh, go hand in hand. You, you can't have the ball for 35 plus minutes if you're not successful on third down. And uh, I think it says a lot about uh, uh, the execution was improved. The energy was always there. Uh, I, 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 I never have a, an issue with how our kids play and the energy or the effort they give forth. But uh, we needed to improve on our uh, on our execution. And now the challenge this week is can we consistently continue to do things the right way on both sides of the football and special teams. So with that, I'll, I'll open it up for questions. Freshman and redshirt freshman had a lot of big performances on Saturday. What was it like for you to see them kind of step up to the plate in a playoff game? Well, it, was, it was good. Uh, that, that's what a year's worth of practice and preparation will do for a young man is give him the confidence to be successful. Uh, it, it, it's exciting uh, when you see the, the most art twins had with three sacks over the course of the game. Or Courtney Eubanks had a huge play on that bubble uh, as the ball was going from north to south. Uh, and I think that was, uh, that might have been late in the second quarter there. But I mean, just flashes of really good play. Dom Jones having another huge interception for us. Cam Miller playing uh, well at the quarterback position. And then uh, Dom Gannell, I could go on and on. There's a lot of guys that uh, were a piece. Jake Rock stepping in for his first start ever uh, as a Bison. Um, Excited about, about where they're at. Uh, I don't think any of them feel comfortable with the product that they've made it or we've, we've, we've reached the uh, top performance. There's a lot of room to improve. Uh, but our coaches have done a tremendous job over the course of the last seven, eight months of preparing these guys. What's Nesky, what, what, how he played? Uh, just, yeah, he's a, he's a really good football player. Um, I don't know if you ever anticipate a, a true freshman coming in and leading you in tackles. He'd done an uh, outstanding job up to this point on special teams, uh, was an impact player for us, on, and, and still was even, uh, even on Saturday, kickoff coverage. He's always done a great job. He's on punt. He's on some other special teams for us. But uh, I think our staff did a really good job of trying to minimize his game plan, the things that he was going to have to do during the course of the game so he could feel confident and play fast. Physically, that lends himself to playing early like that. When you look at him. Well, he's 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 physically put together already. I mean, he's 215 pounds uh, as a freshman. Uh, he is extremely intelligent young man. I mean, he falls kind of all the all the things we we ask: character, intelligence, toughness, athleticism. He checks the box on all of them. Uh, probably a reason why uh, he's able to play sooner in his career. The uh, mid-80s, are you concerned about any acclimatization or anything like that? Well, I, I, I think hydration will be a, a big concern for us. We're, uh, our kids, they're, they're already looking. They know. Um, Coach Kramer, uh, uh, our, our medical personnel will, will, uh, will continue to remind our guys about hydrating all week long. It can't just start on, on Friday or Saturday. It has to start early this week. Um, we'll do everything we can. Uh, to make adjustments. It, it, we are going to try to get out. It looks like Wednesday, uh, potentially close to 70 here. And, and so at least let's get outside and, you know, field some punts under the, under the sun. Let's, let's let the, you know, hopefully there's a slight breeze, not a, not a typical North Dakota breeze, but uh, a slight one. So we can get out and at least practice outside a little bit. Have you been outside at all? We have not. How did you come out of the game health-wise on Saturday? Do you anticipate any guys that didn't play back this coming week? I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we'll have a, a couple guys back. Um, I know Dawson Weber moving around pretty well. Uh, I, because the game's on Sunday, that, that probably 
falls in our favor a little bit, getting a veteran like him back uh, in the back end, especially against a team like uh, Sam Houston, who has, an, uh, again, we're playing another team that has outstanding wide receiver core. Uh, Zach Kubis, day to day. Uh, Zach was working hard on it last week, trying to get back. Uh, those are really the two that I that would be in question. Otherwise, uh, we came out of the game pretty well. And, and that's good. Uh, it, but when you win like that, you, you keep your fingers crossed as you're leaving the dome that you're going to be healthy. This is injury. Ankle. Kayser, is that still day to day? Day to day. I haven't seen James yet today. Uh, again, we'll have a team meeting here shortly. Uh, and then I'll connect with uh, with Mason. I just know everyone's been in the training room today, and there's there's nothing new. Lukey, when he dove into the end zone, looked like he kind of came up with his shoulder a little bit. Yep. He's, he'll he was clear to go. Yep. Dr. Pyatt came up and said he's as strong as he was before that play. I think it was more just precautionary. Uh, that's why he wears the Sully brace. Um, that was the shoulder that he had some issues with leading up to the spring and just making sure that, uh, you know, again, we're emphasizing safety and health of our players. Valley was four and one with the only loss in our conference. Your thoughts on that? I still, I, guys, I, I've been in the Valley now for probably 12 years or so, or since 2009. Um, I, I, I think it's the best league in the in the country. Uh, I think it has some of the best coaches in the country, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me. Uh, I think uh, uh, the coaches in our league do a great job of preparing all year long, uh, not trying to peak too early and play their best football late in the season. Is to Eastern Washington similar in what they do, or how do you compare the oh, teams? There are some similarities. I don't think you'd say they're completely different. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I know on the defensive side, Sam Houston's caused some issues for some people. I think they're the number one team in the country in regards to rushing defense. Uh, they're very active up front. Uh, they've, they've improved since the last time we've played them in 2017 uh, up front at the defensive line, even though back then they had a draft pick that played against us back then. But I think they're improved up front, uh, which is going to have to be – I mean, it's going to be one of our areas of strength or the ones that we like to consider are the Rams and crew chiefs against their uh, area of strength. Got a quarterback that that's very active, um, can extend plays. Uh, I don't think he's quite like the quarterback we had to defend this last week, but he, he can hurt you with his feet just as equally as he can with his arm. Uh, they're going to run some RPOs. Uh, they're going to take some pre-snap pictures, see who's uncovered. Uh, they do a good job. Uh, and and you, you go back, you look at this last weekend, I, I want to say every touchdown they had against Monmouth was set up by an explosive play. And it tells you the value of those and winning that battle. A road playoff game with such a young team. What's the level of concern after you right now? How confident are you going into a road playoff game with this young group? I asked me after practice tonight. I, guess, I mean, I, I feel good. we're not going to treat the game any, any differently than we would any other week, uh, and we're not going to treat it any differently than any other road game. Uh, we, we, we're going to have our. It'll be slightly different because of some NCA mandated adjustments to the schedule, but we're going to try to keep it as similar as possible. Uh, you know, our, our, our kids are used to routine. We have a process that we go through. It doesn't matter if we're home or away, and we'll follow our home protocol, or excuse me, our away protocol. How crucial is it to have those young freshmen continue to have success as the playoffs go on? Well, they, ha they, they need to continue to have success because that's our depth right now. Uh, our young guys are our depth, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a good thing. It's been a growing, uh, there's been aches and pains, growing pains at time. Uh, with with playing a lot of young players, but uh, it'll all pay off in the long run. These guys are doing a great job, and they're coming to work every day. And uh, this is as long a season that a lot of them have ever been involved in right now. And uh, they're they're learning what it takes to be a Bison. Didn't you have to leave earlier? Would you have to leave Friday to get we, down we there? Will. Okay. We will. Okay. Uh, I know we are going through some of the logistics today. Um, we are going to practice here, uh, and then leave late afternoon, uh, and and hopefully get to the hotel around 8 o'clock or so on, on Friday evening. Is there any contingent, Matt, of going to Cleveland? Is there any for North Dakota State for the draft on Thursday, do you know? Uh, not that I know of. I know Trey has some people that he's invited, but uh, with, with us having a spring season, I think that's kind of limited any option of anyone from NDSU going. All right, though, your game on national television on ESPN, obviously Trey going to be drafted high the week of exposure that this is for your football program. Well, yeah, w once again, what an opportunity for the, for the brand. Uh, from coast to coast, uh, the logo is going to be all over. I think it's a, uh, a credit to, to 
NDSU, the institution, to our athletic department uh, to get this much notoriety, especially right now with, with Trey and, and Dylan and, and Jabril. I know had his pro day today. It sounds as if it went really well from a quick text I got. Um, to have three guys that have the potential of being drafted in the first couple, two, three rounds, I think shows the type of athletes that we're recruiting, the type of character that we're looking for. Uh, probably, hopefully it'll open some eyes and, 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 and generate some interest in some young men that uh, uh, are trying to decide between maybe a, another mid-major besides NDSU. Coach, we have some questions online for you. Yeah. We'll go to Ross Uglum from Bison Report, please. Hey, Coach. Uh, with just, you know, obviously how things went on Saturday, is there a chance, Kubis or no Kubis, that this Volson rock right side might, might have to be the way to go? You're, you're exactly right. The potential's there. Um, it, it was uh, it worked out well for us uh, on this game. I think we we got to look just how it matches up. Uh, but with Zach being question mark, we have to prepare. We have to have a lot of guys prepare to play different places during the course of the game. So you could see some other group of five out there, different places during the course of the game, depending on how things are going, and 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 just making sure we stay healthy. Thanks. You bet. Josh Criswell. Hey, Coach. Josh Criswell from the Huntsville Item. Um, you know, you, you mentioned just a second ago that Sam Houston's defense is a, a different unit than y'all saw a couple years ago. I know they've kind of made an emphasis since that big loss to y'all in 2017. You know, I, I know you're on the defensive side of things then, but, you know, what do you see as the biggest defense difference from that defense to the one you see this year? Well, just the, the, the size and the caliber of defensive line that they have right now, I think, is, is, is different. Is different. Just more. There, there's more of them. Uh, they're deeper. They're a deeper unit. Uh, and that it's unique to say that or odd to say it. When last time we played them, we had a they had an NFL draft pick. But I, I think you look across the board. Uh, they got some really talented, twitchy players that can get off blocks, make plays. So that's where I would. I think it starts, and that's why I think they've made people one dimensional, and then they pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. I think in six or seven games they got. 30 plus sacks already. Uh, there, there's a concern in protection too. Eric Peterson. Yeah, coach, what, I mean, after looking at the film, what did you like what, with what Jake Rock brought to the table on Saturday? Well, th there's plenty of areas that, that Jake can continue to, to work on, but I'll tell you that Jake played fast. Uh, he knew he had to. He, he was, he was next to Cordell. Uh, if he didn't, Cordell was going to give him an earful. And so, I mean, he had to live up to the expectations of the room and end of the Rams. And he got out there and, and maybe wasn't picture perfect in the technique, but he played hard. He tried to move people. Uh, he got after people. Are there things that we could continue to work on with feet and punch and demeanor and pad level? Of course there is. But uh, when a guy can get out there and play as hard as he did, you know you have a chance. And just describe the job maybe uh, Coach Larson has done this spring. I think it might be your fourth different combination on the offensive line of being able to kind of mix and match pieces as, you, as you've had to as the spring's gone. He's, he's done a uh, – Coach Larson is, is a super sharp football mind. Uh, he's been an offensive coordinator. He's been a skill – he's coached skill kid. He was a running back coach for us for, uh, you know, 2019 season. He's been a head football coach. He's been extremely valuable, not only to the offensive side of the football, but to myself as well, bouncing ideas off a former head coach. Um, he, he, he's probably a, a great combination of Coach Riley and Coach Blazek. He probably falls somewhere right in the middle, and I think that is a positive. He can connect with about every kid in that room, uh, very detail-oriented in his teaching. Um, a very fired up individual as well, and uh, uh, we'll get after the guys. They they know exactly where they stand every day after every snap. And, and just I, I you talked about a little bit on Saturday, but just how important is a, a guy like Jalen Bussey just bringing a, a different look from your running back spot? And what do you like about him being back in the offense? Well, he's just a different tempo. You saw that on Saturday. Uh, we had that that holding call. Uh, one of three penalties, which our team does a, a still continue doing a great job of limiting those. Uh, we had a holding call that took back a big play. Next play, uh, we dialed up counter and just different tempo, different speed coming through the through the uh, uh, through the hole, but also the ability to make people miss. And you, you saw it uh, a little bit on Saturday, and, and, it, and it brings a smile to my face. He'll run hard. 
uh, there was that one tackle or attempted tackle over on the sideline uh, that he kind of threw the guy into the sideline. There was a great stiff arm going in, into the north end zone one time. So, um, you know, I know Jalen see or everyone sees Jalen's physical stature, but he runs extremely hard, uh, but he does bring a different tempo to the run game. Thank you. Yep. Ross Huggalo. Coach, whether or not you get Dawson back, has Courtney Eubanks kind of forced his way onto the field at this point? He's playing really well, very confident. You saw that if, if you were able to see the all 22, uh, this young man isn't afraid of anybody. He, was, I mean, he lined up most of the day against receivers that were probably three or four inches taller than him. Played extremely physical, uh, got connected, moved his feet, uh, you know, can tackle, can hit. Uh, really excited about where he's at and his development. Uh, Coach Morgan's done an outstanding job of getting him in place where he can be a 30, 40 snap guy for us. Be, be happy to catch the All-22, Coach, whenever you're ready to share it. Any other questions here in the room? Yeah, you know, um, Trey's going to get a lot of the attention the next few days, but but for you guys to have Dylan and Jabril going probably in the second round, sure. just uh, what, how important is that to, to show that whatever, that, that you got it's, that you get depth as opposed well, to just I, the I one marquee you player? I, I think what you said right there is just the the, the – the level of talent and the depth of talent that young men are going to play with when they come here. Uh, one of the recruiting pieces that or messages that we try to utilize is good players want to play with good players. It, it's funny, a lot of I, I visited with a ton of NFL personnel, media personnel, um, and they all ask, well, what about the level of competition? And my response was, you got to remember who he played with. That. It's that practice that matter. He went against a drafted D end. He went against some high-level Marquise Bridges. Uh, he, he went at corner. He went against James Hendricks, one of the best safeties ever to play here. Jabril Cox, he had a, he had a draftable left tackle next to him. He had a, probably other linemen that are on our football team that will have opportunities. And, and so that's the thing I think a lot of people don't realize is just the, the, the talent pool that we've tried to assemble here at NDSU. And we're going to continue to do that. Uh, it gets harder and harder, and, and you guys know exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about when I say that. But no excuses. We need to continue to find the best ones out there. You guys still claim Jabril as your own, even though he played the year at LSU. He's still a – Heck yeah. He's, <laughs> he's an alum, right? Once a buys, an alum. Come on. Real grow. As well, I mean, you're the you're the D coordinator during his time here. Yeah, he, so he was a quarterback in high school. He played very minimal uh, on the defensive side, and you know, to to recruit a young man and to to be able to sell him this dream or this thought that hey, you can be a pretty special or extremely talented linebacker when you've never really been a defensive player much of your career, coming off a, an ACL injury, came here. We, we, we tried to – we got him, maybe it was my fault, at Mike Linebacker. Didn't quite work out very well. Moved him to our slot area defender. And, you know, it took an injury to Chris Board, another young man in the NFL, to get him on the field at Youngstown in 2017. Was that, I think? And I remember the first time he got out there, I, I just said, guys, I'm going to blitz him about four times in a row so I know where he's at. And I think he had two sacks within the next four plays. And then the rest was history. But he, he continues to grow. Getting better, always. The more football you play, the better you should get. And I'm excited for him. But, yeah, we're claiming him as ours. He was developed here. Is there a common question you've got besides the level of competition that either made you chuckle from the NFL people or media over the last three months, four months? Oh, I think the, the number one question that I probably received from a lot of the, the coaches um, and GMs is why should we take so and so? You know, why 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 is why is he better than? And and a lot of times, and I think it's part of the development piece here, is everything above the shoulders. They they know football. Uh, I think we play a good brand of football. Uh, we we do a lot. We require a lot of adjustments and thinking with our players. So I think when they go to the NFL, they they under on defensive side, they understand coverages, they understand leverage. Offensively, they understand schemes. Hey, this is a man scheme. This is zone scheme. This is gap scheme. We, 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 we have some volume to our program, and I think that, that lends itself to be successful at the next level.